Hey ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be taking a look at the Z690 Oris Master. Um, I told you I'd be bringing you more videos and so we're doing some more stuff today. We've had this board for a while but we're going to do a proper uh, explanation, overview of it and then in part two, which will come in the future, we will do a teardown and uh, look at all the chips because to be honest, the Z690 boards and basically almost all motherboards these days because of the PCI 4.0 PCIe 5.0, DDR5, you have a lot of extra chips on the motherboard, and the boards are much more complex, they're much pricier, so we decided to split this into two. Um, so let's get started with the overview and the unboxing of this product, all right? So first of all, you have your motherboard here. Um, I think it did come with something plastic on it, but I mean, I like to play with the boards before I do these videos. Uh, so sometimes I take them out. Plus, except for EVGA boards, no one actually seals their motherboards inside the box. Anyways, it comes in a foam padded uh, enclosure, and I think it has a piece of plastic over it fitted to the board. We'll put this aside for a second. That's heavy. Um, inside the box, you've got some stickers, okay? Um, these are case badge stickers. You can put them anywhere. I think there's one for your passport, too. Um, so if you're into that kind of customization stuff, they have that. Uh, not really changed that much. So here we have the manual, and it's like really thin, but it actually has a really a lot of good information in it. Um, I guess it skips over some parts because usually they used to be like twice to three times as thick, but it has everything from a block diagram to uh, indicate every single function of every button and header, um, and then like a DRAM installation. Oh, new Oris case badge. Uh, this is new for Z690. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, actually looks pretty nice. Alright, accessories. Let's just put them all out here so we can take a look. This actually is the first time I'm looking at the accessories. Uh, so one accessory you're not going to see is the IO Shield board overview. So here you have the board. Here it is up like that. You can see it, but let's go at this angle so we can see a little bit more. Uh, here we have our I.O. connectors, our I.O. panel. And here and here you have your uh, clear CMOS button and also your Q-Flash Plus button. Underneath this RJ45 Ethernet, which is 10 gigabits per second from Acquainta, you find a sole USB 3.2 Gen 2, I believe, 10 gigabits per second. So you, what used to be called USB 3.1. Um, so 10 gigabits per second connector, and that is your, also your Q-Flash Plus. Underneath that is a USB 3.2 by 2, um, Gen, USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. That means it's 20 gigabits per second, um, which is one of only two ports on this motherboard that do that. That and the internal Type-C connector. The other Type-C connector right next to it is basically a USB 3.2 Gen 2. So not by two, so it only has one link, and uh, that means it's 10 gigabits per second. All the red ones you see here, all those red USB 3.2 ports are USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. They're all 10 gigabits per second, including that one USB Type-C. The other one is double the bandwidth of the other Type-C port. Then you have uh, four uh, blue ports. Those used to be called USB 3.0. They're 5 gigabits per second. Now they're called USB 3.2 Gen 1. Wow, what a mouthful. Um, <laughs> uh, you have your 7.1 audio connectors, um, I think that's, oh, there should be some kind of display port or something. Yeah, there's a single display port because this motherboard's CPUs, unless it's a KF model or just an F model, it comes with the integrated graphics. So if you have no F behind your model name on your CPU, you get graphics. Now this you can also see at an angle. These are 8-pin uh, CPU power connectors, um, ESP, v, uh, ATX, they're 12 volt. Um, you have two fan headers here. You also have a total fan, 10 fan headers on this motherboard. All of them are two amps, so all of them support up to 24 watts. You have four here. You have a bunch of system pump headers. I think you've got these two are pump headers. This is a pump header, and one all the way back here is a pump header. Um, so you got those. This is a brand new Fins Array 3. Um, these are copper fins that are anodized, and these are basically for the CPU. Uh, 9 watt over every kilokelvin uh, thermal pad underneath, direct heat pipe on the back side. You do have a, a aluminum plating that goes all around the motherboard, and that will basically help cool the back of the motherboard. You have a huge VRM here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 
12, 14, 16, 18. Yeah, um, it's a lot of phases. Oof. We'll take a look at that when I tear down the board. I can't really see it. It's something like 19 plus 1 plus 2. Anyways, so you got these four fan headers and capacitors. Here you have your uh, two. You have, you have another set of these headers, the RGB headers, of course. So you have normal RGB here. You have your, what the Gigabyte calls digital, addressable three pin, but in a four pin format. RGB right here. Uh, you have your power button, cute, and your post po code display, uh, port 80H display. So you can see more diagnostic info from this. On the, down here on this side of the board, you have these uh, QLEDs, and they tell you uh, stuff is working. So let's keep going. You do have a header here. There's a two pin header. Remember, I mentioned those thermistors? One of them can plug here. There's just a little tiny jumper header here, if you can see. And another pump header here. Now, the pump headers and all the other headers on the motherboard for fans, they're all hybrid headers. So they all can be voltage mode or PWM mode. Um, yeah. And they all provide up to two amps. I believe, though, the pump headers by default might be just full speed. Um, and basically, most people, when you plug in your pump, you usually start at full speed and then take it lower if you uh, if you want to reduce, I guess, wear and tear, or if you just don't like the noise. Depends on your cooling system. Anyways, you have uh, two headers here. These are USB 3.2 uh, Gen 1, uh, 5 gigabits per second. And yeah, they come off a hub. Uh, it's a real tech hub right here. I can just tell from here. Uh, this is one of the two directly routed to the chipset, USB 3.2 2 by 2, um, uh, USB 3.0 Gen 2 by 2. So it's two Gen 2 links basically, and so you can get 20 gigabits per second on here. Here you have two types of GPIO headers for Thunderbolt um, cards. Here you have your SATA. Uh, connectors, you get six cables, so you can fill all these up. Just be in mind, this SATA port and the M.2 slot hidden under here, they share lanes. So, I mean, if you use up these SATA, this will be messed, uh, well, not messed, but it'll be disabled. But this is also your only M.2 slot that has SATA capability, so you can put a SATA M.2 drive in here. Um, but you have four other slots, and they're all PCIe NVMe drive uh, supported. Um, I guess it doesn't technically have to be NVMe, but they have to be PCIe. Uh, so, if we keep going, your front panel headers, you can put your G connector in there. Here we should have a uh, header for clear CMOS, trusted platform module, two more headers, I believe this one is also a pump. This is a reset button, a Gigabyte calls it multi-key, and they call it multi-key because uh, it's, I guess, by default reset. And in the BIOS you can go in and configure it to either control RGBs, um, so if you hit it, maybe go into a different RGB mode, uh, a direct to BIOS, so if you want to boot up, and go directly to the BIOS, you can use this, uh, only if you set it. And then uh, also only if you set it, you can go and boot into safe mode. So if you're overclocking and you don't like the results, the system's not booting, hit the button and it should kick in, fail safe results. Uh, so keep going, two USB 2.0 headers. And um, yeah, two USB 2.0. So you have those and they also come from a hub. I think it's a GTEC hub, or GL tech, whatever. Uh, another fan header, uh, you have a noise sensor here. Uh, you also have another header here. Uh, this is your secondary thermistor header. So your second temperature sensor plugs in there. Two more RGBs. Um, so you put your noise header here if you want to use that. Otherwise it's closed by a little jumper. Do not put a jumper on any other header on this motherboard, please. Other than the front panel headers, that little group in the box over there. Um, so here you have your two uh, RGB headers. You have normal RGB and you have uh, addressable. You also have your audio, HD audio headers. So. Um, let me go over some of the other stuff, but let me grab a screwdriver and do that for you. And we're going to see the M.2s because I should be able to explain this to you because it is actually quite important. So we're going to take these out. So you got a few screws you got to remove for the these bottom M.2s. There is an M.2 slot up here. It's directly routed to the CPU, which is an addition to the Alder Lake. CPUs, they have an extra four PCIe ports directly. They're PCIe Gen 4. Um, Gen 4 can come out of the chipset or it can come out of the CPU. This slot significantly just goes to the CPU and that, that's significant because it bypasses the chipset. So it should provide slightly faster. Okay. This is a pretty hefty heatsink. And I think it's that way on purpose. 
and this is a uh, this heat sink will help cool any fast or hot running uh, Gen 4 M.2 uh, drive and then it goes in this one bypassing the chipset directly to the CPU this right here this is your PCI 5.0 uh, by 16 slot it is hardwired by 16 mostly because um, well switching PCI 5.0 is is a little difficult switching 4.0 is difficult enough uh, that's why this PCB has to be a low loss signal 8 layer PCB um, and they had to use these and they asked more SMT, SMT mounting uh, anchors because the DDR5 dims here they're also a new standard. PCI 5.0 also a new standard. So they use SMT technology on these slots. So instead of a through hole, like these would be, these are going to be SMT. Now, you usually only used to see SMT on high end overclocking motherboards. Now you see them here. Now, this is tr three slots worth of width between these. Or, yeah, three slots width of worth, uh, worth of width. So at least. So you can put in pretty large coolers here. Or actually, maybe four slots worth. Or three, three. Anyways, here you go. Four more. Okay, let's get this down. This slot here, meant for SATA or NVMe PCIe by fourth drives. These two bottom SATA slots, they're stacked. They share with this, okay? Now, this slot here, by four, 3.0 from the chipset, just like this. And, but if you use this, this is disabled. If you use this, this is disabled. This is directly to the CPU. Uh, so Thunderbolt can go here and a capture card can go here, whatever you like um, or need. Here you have, uh, these are PCI 4.0s, okay? But they're through the chipset. Now the chipset's DMI has been upgraded to DMI 4.0 um, between the, this and this. So basically you do have the bandwidth to move that. Um, I guess if you use all of these uh, with the fastest drives you could find, you might be able to saturate this. Anyways, so these are PCI 4.0, and uh, this, 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 and this do not support SATA protocol. That has to come from the PCH, and only this one actually allows it to go. So if you have a SATA M.2 drive, this is your only bet. If you don't, these these are your best bets for NVMe. Uh, this one is obviously going to be the best. Uh, because it's directly to CPU and bypasses this link right here, the DMI, the direct media interface. So, oh, you also have uh, audio here. Um, you have an ALC-VB, that's what Gigabyte dubs it, codec, and then you also have an ESS Sabre, I think it's ES9118 uh, DAC in there uh, for bettering audio. You also have a little tiny battery there. I actually haven't taken the heatsinks off. I waited for you guys, but uh, this is what I will do. I'll take this off. We'll seem to like that, um, and I like it too. So if you buy this board, you can do this yourself. Ooh. So now it's, you can see, all oh, its glory. Uh, there's some designs here, and there's also uh, some more here on the back. I'll take that off later. It's probably not going to be easiest. But yeah, so this is the motherboard. It's pretty nice. Oh, this one has some too. Here. Uh, and next, we're going to tear it down. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, that might take a little bit longer to basically film and everything, but we'll get it done. And it'll be nice. So, yeah. Oof. These heat sinks are all big. And they're all aluminum, which is nice. Oh, hold on. Here's the back of the motherboard. Um, yeah. So from the back of the motherboard, we can see that you have a this aluminum. These are not, they're easy to take off. They're harder to figure out how to put together because you gotta take this off too. Uh, yeah, so that's this for now and uh, we will come back later and tear it down, all right? Thank you.